The Prophet ﷺ describes to us the moment on the Day of Judgment where he will fall on his face and he will pray to Allah in the most consequential dua in the history of mankind. And he says وسلم, that in this great moment of intercession that I will fall face first and Allah will inspire me with Muhammad, with words of hamd, words of praise that I don't even know right now. SubhanAllah, think about the Prophet وسلم, with his face on the ground and Allah giving him the best way to praise him subhanahu wa ta'ala for the benefit of all of his creation. The beauty of this concept of hamd, muhammad, words of praise, alhamdulillah, is that it is the most natural form of dua and it's the most open-ended. And so a man came to the Prophet and said to the Prophet Ya Rasulullah, I have praised my Lord with some of these Muhammad, with some words of praise. And then I just let my dua go wherever it went. And the Prophet said, Inna Rabbaka Yuhibbul Hamd. Your Lord loves praise. And so when a person starts to make dua, they can say Alhamdulillah, they can praise Allah, and then they can mention any of His names and attributes that they want. They can mention any of the favors of Allah. They can mention any of the specific blessings that they want to mention or something that they want more of. The point is you really can't go wrong with this dhikr and then using this dhikr to propel your dua forward. Alhamdulillah for who you are. Alhamdulillah for what you have given me. Alhamdulillah for anything that I'm even asking you for. And we find that the angels, they struggle to record just like they struggle to record tasbih, the weight of this hamd. And the Prophet ﷺ, one time while he was praying, he heard a man behind him say, رَبَّنَا وَلَكَ الْحَمْدِ حَمْدًا كَثِيرًا طَيِّبًا مُبَارَكًا فِيهِ O oh Allah, to you belongs all praise, hamdan kathiran, plentiful, tayyiban, pure, mubarakan fi, that is blessed and abundant. And in one narration, alhamdulillah, hamdan kathiran, tayyiban, mubarakan fi, mubarakan alay, kama yuhibbu rabbuna wa yarda, like our Lord loves and is pleased with. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, who said that dua when we were rising from the rukur? And when the man was identified, the Prophet ﷺ said, I saw 30 angels that were rushing to try to capture your praise and take it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now what's the difference and how are tasbih and tahmeed complementary to one another? Al-Hafid ibn Kathir rahimahullah, he says that tasbih, saying subhanAllah, is to affirm Allah's freedom from any aib or naqs, from any flaw or deficiency. And then tahmeed is to praise Allah for His perfection and for His grace. And together, these are the two athkar that fill the mizan. They fill the scale on the Day of Judgment and they fill what is between the heavens and the earth. And Allah connects them together when He says, فَسُبْحَانَ حِينَ تُمْسُونَ وَحِينَ تُصْبِحُونَ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ So declare the perfection of Allah when you wake up and when you retire in the evening and His praise fills the heavens and the earth. Now, what does it mean to praise Allah? What is the deeper meaning of Alhamdulillah? You see, the word hamd is comprehensive, and this is from the mercy of Allah that He gives us comprehensive ways that we can praise Him. The word hamd combines both, as the scholars say, thana and shukur, praise and gratitude. So you're not just praising Allah, you're not just thanking Allah, but you're doing both with a single word. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because He is who He is, does not actually need anyone to praise Him for Him to be praiseworthy. He is Al-Aziz Al-Hamid. He is the one who is almighty, whether you acknowledge His might or not. And He is all praiseworthy, whether you praise Him or not. And we even see that beauty in the Qur'an itself, in Surah Al-Fatiha, that the first one to praise Allah in the Qur'an is Himself. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allah's word starts with the hamd of Allah, the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself. And this praise is different from what's known in the Arabic language as al-madh. Al-madh, as the scholars say, could be praise, but it doesn't necessarily have embedded in that praise love and honor. Hamd is, as the scholars say, athana bil jamil ala al jamil ala wajhi al mahabbati wa ta'zim. It is beautiful praise upon one who is beautiful 
and it has embedded within it love and glory. And so it's a very special way that you speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in afdal dua alhamdulillah, wa afdal dhikr la ilaha illallah, that the best dua is alhamdulillah, and the best dhikr is la ilaha illallah. So hamd actually plays the role of being both of the greatest forms of dhikr, remembrance, but also being a dua in and of itself. Why? Because you are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without actually asking him for anything. And so you give this dua, alhamdulillah. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a dua, he said that this is the most superior of the supplications. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna Allah astafa min al-kalami arba'a. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen amongst all words four words, four phrases, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Now he says in this long hadith sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that whoever says subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes down 20 good deeds for them. And whoever says la ilaha illallah, Allah writes down 20 good deeds. And whoever says Allahu Akbar, Allah writes down 20 good deeds. And with all of those, he also removes 20 sins. So 20 good deeds and 20 sins. But then he says, whoever says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, min qibali nafsihi, says Alhamdulillah from themselves, meaning just says Alhamdulillah by itself, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes down 30 good deeds and removes 30 sins. So Alhamdulillah is a form of dhikr and it's a form of dua. And the Prophet ﷺ says in another hadith, no one says Alhamdulillah for a blessing that has been given to them, except that what you gave is better than what you were given. Meaning what? The blessing that was given to you for which you're saying Alhamdulillah is not as great of a blessing as the Alhamdulillah that you gave because the blessing that is going to come about because of your saying Alhamdulillah is greater than the one that led you to praise him in the first place. So how do we use this dhikr on a daily basis? Number one, just like tasbih, you say it 33 times after your salah. So SubhanAllah and Alhamdulillah will both be 33 times. You also will say it 100 times a day at least, and you can combine that with your tasbih. So you could do your tasbih and your tahmeed together. But you'll notice that Alhamdulillah is ingrained in us in such a way that when we recognize a blessing, we immediately say Alhamdulillah. And the first blessing you recognize is the one that you wake up to. Meaning the very fact that you have woken up, the Prophet ﷺ said, that when a person wakes up, they say, Alhamdulillah ladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. You thank Allah for giving you life after death and to Him is the ultimate return. And so any blessing that comes to you throughout the day, you have already started a relationship with Allah with your entire day, that just by breathing that day, you're saying Alhamdulillah. So what then when you eat? The Prophet ﷺ taught us to say Alhamdulillah after we eat our food. But he said specifically, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that whoever eats and says, Alhamdulillahi alladhi at'amani hadha wa razaqnihi min ghayri hawli minni wa laquwa. All praises and thanks be to the one who fed this to me and provided it to me without any strength or any capacity of my own. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ghufira lahu ma taqadama min dhanbihi. Allah will forgive all of your sins. He said the same thing sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when it comes to your getting dressed. You know, how often do we thank Allah for the clothes we put on? Every single day. And he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that whoever wears their clothes, they take a new garment, they put it on, and they say, Alhamdulillah alladhi kasani hadha thawb min ghayri hawla minni wa la quwa. All praises and thanks be to Allah who provided this thawb for me without any power, any strength, any capacity of my own. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah will forgive all of your sins. When anything happens to you, of good, you thank Allah for the blessing. Of hardship, alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. You thank Allah for all things, even in hardship. When you sneeze, the Prophet ﷺ taught that when you sneeze, you say alhamdulillah. And that if a person does not praise Allah when they sneeze, then the shaitan mocks them. Now, if this is how it is in this dunya, where despite the imperfections of the blessings that you have here, you still thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you still say Alhamdulillah naturally. Imagine your sentiment when you enter into Jannah and you eat the food there or when you wear the clothes there. And so it's a natural extension of your goodness here 
that you continue to give praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a natural extension of Allah's excellence that he continues to give you more and more and more and more every time you thank him for what you already have. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah. Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan feeh. غير مكفين ولا مودع ولا مستغنى عنه ربنا الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده اللهم ما أصبح بي من نعمة أو بأحد من خلقك فمنك وحدك لا شريك لك فلك الحمد ولك الشكر يا رب لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك الحمد لله الذي أحيانا بعدما أماتنا وإليه النشور الحمد لله الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات الحمد لله على كل حال الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه مباركا عليه كما يحب ربنا ويرضاه